When we asked people what's the most indestructible animal to have ever lived on Earth, we were hit with a barrage of different suggestions. Everything from dinosaurs and reptiles to invertebrates and fish were thrown into the ring. But what's the actual answer? Well, if you Google most indestructible animal, this little critter pops up, with headlines claiming that they can survive incredible levels of radiation, live at the bottom of the ocean, or in the vacuum of space. Now, I don't want to say Google is wrong, but it's definitely not right either. So, what is the most indestructible animal to have ever lived on Earth? Let's unpick this tangled web of Earth's greatest survivors. I'm Stu, this is Debunked, and we're here to sort the truths from the myths and the facts from the misconceptions. With so many pretenders for the crown of most indestructible animal, let's start with some of the oldest candidates. I'm talking seriously old, prehistoric in fact. Going all the way back to the Cretaceous period, you might expect fan favourite dinosaurs like the T-Rex to be pretty hardy. Instead, it turns out that the most indestructible dinosaurs weren't the ones trying to kill each other, but rather those critters who just wanted to eat their greens in peace. One such species of dinosaur was the Ankylosaur, which might easily be mistaken for a tank. The Uoplocephalus is probably the best example of this genus. Covered with thick spines across its back and sides of its head for protection, even its eyelids were armoured. Its skull was so thick that an attack from a raptor like a Deinonychus would leave barely a scratch, and it could withstand a bite from a Tyrannosaurus rex. While some dino experts even believe that their armour could stop small gunfire. And fossils show that if one of these badasses swung well, their ass, then its club-like tail could break the legs of a T-Rex. Now, obviously, ankylosaurs aren't invincible, otherwise they'd still be roaming around today. In fact, even back when they were around, they occasionally ran into difficulty. You see, they had one fundamental weakness. If something managed to flip it over onto its back, its soft, armour-free belly would be exposed, and that often meant game over for an ankylosaur. But, according to paleontologist Kenneth Carpenter, this wouldn't have been easy for a predator to achieve. It would be difficult even without the armour to get a purchase on it, because its body is relatively flat. Combine this with their incredible defences, and most predators just left them alone in favour of easier prey. Can't say I blame them, eating a tank wouldn't be easy. But I'm afraid it doesn't matter if the Uoplocephalus was the most indestructible dinosaur, because around 66 million years ago, it's fair to say there was a little incident. And by little incident, I'm of course referring to that time a huge meteorite slammed into Earth, causing the mass extinction of the dinosaurs and 75% of all other species. That still leaves an awful lot of survivors though, so surely some of them must have a claim to the title of most indestructible animal. How about the humble crocodile? Other than size, this modern-day living fossil hasn't really evolved in around 200 million years, fitting the definition of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, how did it survive a near apocalypse? Well, to start with, the KT extinction, as it's known, wasn't an overnight event. It took place over a few hundred to a few thousand years. So, while crocs have an impressive armoured skin similar to the late ankylosaurs, it wasn't defence mechanisms like this that were key to its survival. The species that survived were those that were best adapted to the aftermath, and not necessarily the initial event. Blast a crocodile with an asteroid, and you'll end up with a dead crocodile. What worked in their favour, however, was their habitat. While this extinction event wiped out land-dwelling dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and the majority of marine reptiles, crocs got off relatively lightly. Living between land and freshwater lakes or saltwater estuaries allowed them to avoid the worst hit environments on land and in saltwater oceans. Crocs are also cold-blooded, allowing them to slow their metabolism and survive when food was in short supply, which it most definitely was in the post-apocalyptic world following the KT extinction. Plus, most paleontologists now consider dinosaurs to be at the warm-blooded end of the spectrum. And when food became scarce, so did they. While we're right to be impressed with how crocodiles survived when lots of other creatures died out, they weren't exactly the only species to make it through those dark times. 
there were plenty of other species that had the ability to endure those trying conditions. I mean, we wouldn't be here today without the survival of our early primate relatives. In fact, a whole host of animals you know today have barely evolved since they lived alongside the dinosaurs. There's the duck-billed platypus, sharks, and green sea turtles. But one little critter has been around long before all of these aquatic greats. Crawling along the present-day sea floor, you'll find the horseshoe crab. This humble animal might not look like much, but they've withstood three of the planet's mass extinctions and date back 450 million years. Having lived through some of the most dramatic environmental changes Earth has ever seen, they're an incredibly adaptable species. They can feed on nearly any organic matter, have an armored shell that can heal over pretty much any wound, and they can survive with very low oxygen levels. There's just one problem, us. Despite surviving nearly half a billion years, in 2016, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature put these guys on the vulnerable list. Aside from habitat loss, these creatures are harvested by the pharmaceutical industry for their bacteria indicating blood. The net result has been a steady decline of their population. As unfortunate as that is, we can't exactly have the most indestructible animal sitting on a vulnerable list. With humans now being the biggest threat to these epic survivors, let's bring in another man-made destructive force, nuclear bombs. Surely anything that can get through a nuclear blast must have a shot at the title of most indestructible animal. Now, I'd imagine the creature that springs to mind is the formidable little cockroach. The idea that they can handle a nuclear explosion has been around since reports circulated that these mini-beasts were the only survivors found in the rubble following the Hiroshima and Nagasaki atomic bombs. But the fact is, cockroaches can't withstand the intense energy released by a nuclear explosion. Their presence after the atomic bombs was due to their ability to withstand extreme levels of radiation. As a point of reference, the aforementioned atomic bombs released radiation levels of around 100 grays each. Roaches can withstand up to 1,000 grays. Why are these little guys so resilient to radiation? Well, it's all down to their body's simple design and slow cell cycle. You see, cells are particularly susceptible to radiation when they're dividing and renewing. The human cell cycle is fairly constant and takes place every 24 hours. Cockroaches, comparatively, change once a week, and it takes 48 hours. So their window of vulnerability is much narrower. These guys won't be walking away from the hypercenter of a nuclear bomb, and to be honest, no animal can, but they can hold their own post-nuke. They've also got a pretty good track record of survival, having evolved around 200 million years ago, living alongside the crocodile and surviving the KT extinction. So far, I think we've been too easy on the animal kingdom. We need to up the stakes and really ramp up the level of destruction. What could possibly survive a huge asteroid hitting the planet, throwing billions of tons of rock into the air, while simultaneously a series of the biggest volcanic eruptions take place, filling the atmosphere with ash, blocking out the sun? Actually, that's not enough. Let's detonate a whole bunch of nuclear bombs for good measure. Now we should have the biggest mass extinction ever to occur on our planet. What animal could get through all of that? Well, somewhere amongst all the rubble and fallout of our once thriving planet, you'll find those little fellas we mentioned at the start. A creature known as a tardigrade. Affectionately referred to as water bears or moss piglets, these guys have been on Earth for around 520 million years and can be found in pretty much every environment imaginable. They can survive in the vacuum of space, withstand the pressures of the deepest oceans, go without food or water for 30 to 40 years, be frozen at minus 328 degrees Fahrenheit, or be heated to more than 300 degrees Fahrenheit. They can even cope with radiation levels up to 6,000 grays. A human, for comparison, would be lucky to walk away from 5 grays. There's one rather large problem, however, with how we perceive tardigrades. These little guys can't survive all these extreme environments whilst going about their daily business. Take this little tardigrade, for example. It would have died during the apocalypse. You see, tardigrades, as they exist from day to day, aren't very indestructible at all. In fact, you could kill them pretty easily if you catch them unprepared. 
To become indestructible, these microanimals put themselves into a protective state of cryptobiosis, where they tuck their little legs in and excrete 97% of the moisture from their body. Like this, they become what's known as a ton. They produce a form of antifreeze called glycerol and convert jelly-like proteins into glassy cocoons that protect all parts of the tardigrade that are sensitive to dehydration. As a ton, the tardigrade reduces its metabolism by 99.99% and then simply waits for a more habitable environment to become available. However, here comes the biggest misconception about these cuddly little pig-faced creatures. They can't all survive all extreme environments. Individually, they can live in the most extreme habitats, with species like the Thermosodium misaki found living in acidic hot springs, and other marine tardigrades able to endure life in the crushing depths of the ocean trenches. However, there's no evidence that these marine tardigrades have the ability to transform into a ton. Indeed, these tardigrades will actually die in fresh water, whilst other terrestrial or freshwater species die in high concentrated salt water. And in fact, the species I mentioned in the acidic hot springs is now thought to be extinct after an earthquake. It's also noted that during experiments, only some tardigrades survived being boiled, frozen, and subjected to radiation. Not to be too hard on these guys, but their transformation into an indestructible ton can take several minutes to a couple of hours. So it's not exactly an instantaneous defense mechanism. Plus, the tardigrades that famously survived their trip into space were already in the ton state. So why are these guys popularized as the toughest, most indestructible animal? Well, you see, the headlines that gave them their incredible status were based on a study by theoretical physicists who lumped all the tardigrades and their abilities together, when in fact, there are around 1,250 species. William R. Miller, an expert on tardigrades, explains that merging all the species together simply doesn't work. It's like saying a six-gill shark at the bottom of the ocean is the same as a snow leopard in Siberia. When approaching it from a biological point of view, lumping them all in as one is just unfair when trying to establish the most indestructible animal. And in fact, Miller points out how unjust their popularized indestructible status is. They're quite easily murdered. We kill thousands of them every day. In an apocalyptic sense, however, a 2017 study found that in the ultimate life-destroying astrophysical event, the little water bears living at the bottom of the Marianas Trench would endure and that it would take the world's oceans to boil away before all these little creatures would be wiped out. Problem is, in real life scenarios, you could quite easily just squish them. And ferocious predators, like snails, routinely do, as they chomp down on them for a tasty meal. Although they'd still be resilient to getting squashed between your fingers. Because they're so small, they'd probably just hide in the irregularities of your fingerprints. Right, while we can all agree that tardigrades are incredibly resilient, they can die. But what about animals that like to laugh in the face of death? Ones that have been squished and chopped up, but in true Terminator style, they will generate back to life. Surely that is what Indestructible is really about. And incredibly, there are a lot of animals out there with regenerative powers. From salamanders regrowing their tails, to sea cucumbers regrowing their organs. Okay, let's start with probably the cutest of the candidates so far, the axolotl. This little fella can regrow one of the most important organs of all. Not only can they regenerate a missing limb, tail, or even their lower jaw, but also parts of their brain and heart. If they're paralyzed in the back, they can make all new neurons and new connections that allow them to use their legs again, which is really one of the most incredible examples of recovery. But as incredible as that is, they're still only regenerating parts of the body. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only one who heard the rumor at school about earthworms. You know the theory, if you chop one in two, it will generate into two living earthworms. This is not true. The head end may survive and regrow a stunted tail, but once the nerve endings have stopped it wriggling around, you'll most likely just end up with two halves of a dead earthworm. There is, however, distant relatives known as planarian flatworms, and scientists are describing these incredible creatures as having regenerative superpowers. 
Research has looked at a range of these species since 1901, but it's only today that scientists are beginning to understand its true abilities. This creature can regrow its entire head. But not only that, it retains learned information, as though it had never been decapitated. And it doesn't stop there. This incredible little worm can regenerate from as little as 10,000 cells, which is around only 1 279th of a planarium flatworm's body. How do they do it? Well, it's all down to the fact that their adult stem cells are pluripotent, meaning they can potentially become any cell in the body. With other animals, once they hit adulthood, their stem cells become limited and can only produce cells for specific purposes. Blood stem cells produce blood cells, for example, but they can't produce skin cells. With planarians, special adult stem cells called neoblasts can produce all the different types of cells that make up a complete planarian. In theory, you could chop one worm into 279 pieces, and so long as each part contained one of the special neoblast cells, then you'd have 279 new worms within about two weeks. And this process isn't limited to one round of regeneration. These creatures are, in a way, immortal. Seems impossible. But in order to heal or regenerate, stem cells divide. In other animals, as this process is repeated, the cells start to decay and show signs of aging. When they age, stem cells can no longer divide and can't replace the exhausted cells in our bodies. However, stem cells in planarian flatworms don't stop dividing and so avoid the aging process. What does kill these little guys, however, is radiation. But so long as there remained enough healthy cells in the worm, they could recover. In fact, scientists at MIT have discovered that by transplanting one neoblast cell called a clonogenic neoblast from a healthy worm to a worm that's received a lethal dose of radiation, then that one cell will regenerate the entire worm. So with all these incredible candidates with amazing abilities, which animal comes out on top? Well, to answer this fairly, you need to split them into categories. If a nuclear apocalypse or the ultimate planet-wide extinction fell upon us, then tardigrades would inherit the Earth. In the more day-to-day -day scenario of fighting off predators, then the Uoplocephalus would live to fight another day. But if a bizarre situation occurred where you were chopped up, stamped on and smushed, then the planarian flatworm would be the only creature eventually wriggling away to live another day. On the theme of tough indestructible beasts, this video has been made possible by the namesake of everyone's favourite mighty fish, Surf Shark VPN no less. If you don't know what a VPN is, then here's a quick rundown. Surf Shark connects your internet device to a secure virtual private network via the internet, giving you an extra layer of protection and meaning your computer location lives virtually on one of Surf Shark's servers located all over the world. Your computer may be based in New York, but your computer will appear to be living in Australia for example. Why would you want to do this? Well, with Surfshark, you can access geo-restricted content. That means still being able to enjoy your favorite streaming services and TV shows whilst traveling abroad. But before you even start your actual traveling, a VPN can help save you money on flight, hotel, and apartment bookings. You see, prices often vary for the same product or service, depending on the country from which you are making the booking. Not only do you get all of this, but a VPN can avoid internet censorship. For example, in China, you wouldn't be able to watch this lovely video, as YouTube and many other services are blocked. Surfshark negates this block and allows you to still get your monthly fix of Debunked. Fans of Debunked can get a whopping 83% off of the price of Surfshark and an incredible three extra months free. Just visit surfshark.deals forward slash debunked and enter promo code debunked to make use of their services with this offer. Support from partners like Surfshark enable us to keep making videos, so please head on over and check them out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.